The 80s brought us some of the most iconic slasher flicks that still haunt our nightmares. Let's count down the 10 greatest slasher movies that made the decade a blood-soaked legend. Let's get this out of the way. Friday the 13th wasn't supposed to be a landmark film, but when it hit in 1980, it became a staple of slasher cinema. Originally intended as a cash-in after the success of Halloween, the film still managed to set a new bar for horror. The story follows a group of camp counselors reopening Camp Crystal Lake, oblivious to its violent past, as they're stalked by a mysterious killer. What really sealed this movie's place in pop culture was its now-famous twist ending, still one of the genre's best. Michael Myers, a.k.a. The Shape, returned in Halloween 2 a few years after his original 1978 debut. This sequel picks up right where the first left off, with Michael getting shot six times by Dr. Loomis and surviving. He sets his sights on Lori Strode, who's recovering in the hospital after her close call with death. While many feel that Halloween 2 is best enjoyed as a companion to the first film, it still stands on its own as one of the great slasher sequels. Watch both back to back and you're in for the perfect double feature. Die. Get away from him! But he stopped breathing! No! The Prowler doesn't get the same attention as some of the bigger slashers, but it's earned its spot in the genre. The killer rocks military fatigues and a knife to match, stalking his victims with brutal precision. The story goes back to a World War II vet who kills his ex-girlfriend and her new boyfriend, only to resurface decades later to terrorize a new set of teens. The atmosphere is dark, the kills are memorable, and for its time, the effects were top tier. Don't sleep on this one. They never found out who did it. But it had to be someone in town, someone who knew that she was called Rose. And Mark, that guy still might be around here. Oh, man, I don't believe this. You're talking about something that happened over 30 years ago. Written by feminist novelist Rita Mae Brown and directed by Amy Holden Jones, The Slumber Party Massacre stood out for how it treated its female characters. The plot centers around a high school senior who throws a slumber party while her parents are out of town, but an escaped killer crashes the party. What makes this movie special is how it gives depth to its female characters, something rare for slashers of the time. Brown and Jones created a film that's as much about the characters as it is about the kills, making it one of the most unique slashers of the 80s. Hey, Some people may have to leave early, but others will hang around and hang around. My Bloody Valentine was so good it sparked a 2009 reboot, My Bloody Valentine 3D. But let's not lose sight of what made the original standout. A killer in a miner's mask and gear stalks anyone celebrating Valentine's Day, delivering some of the goriest kills in the genre. The small town setting, the brutality of the pickaxe murders, and Harry Warden's relentless pursuit all combined to create one of the most unforgettable slasher flicks of the 80s. It's no wonder this movie solidified its place as a true classic in slasher history. Look, Landers, you gotta get a lot of exercise if you're gonna grapple with Gretchen. Oh yeah? Well, I got a Valentine for her that she's never gonna forget. <laughs> right to the heart, huh? <laughs> the setup here is golden. 
well-written characters, a sharp script, and a killer premise. The House on Sorority Row mixes slasher mayhem with a touch of social nuance, taking on the issue of hazing. A prank gone horribly wrong leaves a group of sorority sisters in deep trouble as a mysterious killer hunts them down one by one. The kills are savage, the effects hit hard, and the underlying commentary on college life adds a layer that makes this one of the standouts from the 1980s. Creepy barely scratches the surface when it comes to describing Maniac. Frank Zito, a deranged killer, stalks, scalps, and brutally murders women while wrestling with his own twisted sense of remorse. Having a slasher with any kind of self-awareness is rare, and Maniac pushes that uncomfortable dynamic to the forefront. It's an unsettling ride, and that emotional twist makes it stand out from other slasher films of its time. Add in the film's notorious reputation during the video nasty era, and you've got a cult classic that's as disturbing as it is unforgettable. Here's the ironic bit. Jason Voorhees, the face of the Friday the 13th franchise, doesn't even show up as the killer until part two. And no, the hockey mask isn't here yet. That comes later. For now, we've got Jason running around with a sack over his head, but that doesn't make him any less terrifying. Part two introduces one of the most iconic slashers of all time, and Ginny as the final girl? She's as good as they come. This sequel might just be better than the original, and it certainly helped cement Jason's place in horror history. On a June night in 1980, Friday the 13th, 12 of her friends were murdered. Why should Friday the 13th, 1981, be any different? Before Freddy Krueger became known for his cheesy one-liners, he was pure nightmare fuel. A Nightmare on Elm Street gave us a vicious dream-stalking killer who was just as terrifying in the real world. Freddy's backstory as a serial killer turned supernatural nightmare machine set him apart from the other slashers of the era. This first film is raw, terrifying, and a Wes Craven masterpiece, making it one of the best slashers of the 1980s, and honestly, one of the best horror films, period. No one knows where it came from or who it will visit next. Nancy, there's something wrong with you. You're imagining things. Do you believe in the boogeyman? No. Whatever you do, don't fall asleep. No! April Fool's Day is a perfect blend of slasher horror and clever twists. Sure, the setup is classic a group of college students on a secluded island for spring break, and a killer starts picking them off one by one. But it's the execution and that final twist that really make this movie stand out. It plays with the genre's tropes while still delivering plenty of scares, making it one of the most unique entries in the 1980s slasher lineup. You are such a jerk. Everyone is having such a good time. It's scary. 